let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Now Thursday we looked at the subject of assurance. Assurance. And I've been thinking about that all week. I've continued to think about that. You know, our true assurance is the object of assurance. Objective assurance. That is, our true assurance is the object of our faith. He's our assurance. Christ is our assurance. That he will save us. That he will do everything that needs to be done and he will save us. That's our real true assurance. But when we think about assurance, we tend to think about subjective assurance. A feeling within us. A feeling in our heart. And while I thought about this, this scripture came to my mind. And I thought, we need to remember what our master taught us. Matthew 5, verse 3. Here's what he said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Our subject is the blessing of poverty. Now Christ is here describing a very small remnant. There's only been a very small remnant in any generation who knew what they really are in themselves before God. They know what they are in themselves before God. I only want to deal with verse 3 here, but I want to read through all of this, uh, these Beatitudes, just to see what our Redeemer said. Let's read these before we get into this verse 3. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And you know that reward in heaven is Christ. He's our reward. He's our reward. Now let's go back. I want to look at verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I want to look at the persons spoken of here. I want to look at their privilege and then their portion. Now, first of all, the persons, the poor in spirit. Now, notice it's poor in spirit, poor in spirit. Now, according to God's purpose and according to God's predestination, the majority of those that God saves in this world are poor in worldly possessions. They are poor in worldly possessions. You see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men, not many are after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. For God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. There's not many. Hearken, my beloved brethren, James said, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But if we're poor in worldly things, that's okay. That's fine. Because God made it so. 1 Samuel 2, 7 says, The Lord maketh poor. He didn't just save people because they were poor. He made them poor. <laughs> In worldly possession. And they were his chosen from before the world was made. He makes poor. Christ came from the riches of glory and he became poor in worldly things. He was in the riches of heaven, in the in the in untold riches. And he came down to this place and became poor. He didn't own anything while he walked this earth. 
He didn't have a place to lay his head. And you know who he identified himself with? The poor and needy. That's who. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. He called out poor fishermen and spent his days with them. He walked in and out and around and about the poor. He warned us about riches of this world. He said, you think how impossible it would be for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. He said, that's how impossible it will be for a rich man to enter into heaven. Though with God, all things are possible. But you know what God's going to do first? He's going to make you poor. He's going to make you poor. Literally, that's what happened to the Apostle Paul. He was rich before conversion. After conversion, he became poor in worldly possessions for the gospel's sake, for his brethren's sake. He described himself as troubled, persecuted, cast down, poor, and having nothing. But here's the thing about a believer. If we have nothing in worldly possessions... Scripture says we're poor, yet making many rich. We have nothing, yet possess all things. That doesn't sound right to a natural man. That doesn't sound possible for, to a natural man, because you can't see that with natural eyes. That's how it is spiritually. But here's the truth of the matter. A sinner can be poor in worldly possessions and be rich in spirit. What do I mean by that? Well, all are poor in spirit, in reality. All are. But the majority think themselves rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. In reality, all are poor in spirit. But not everybody sees it. Not everybody knows it. Most think they're rich. They think they're rich. To be rich in spirit is for a man to think himself to be rich in, in, the, in the freedom of his will, rich in good works, rich in the knowledge he has of God, strong in faith, strong in knowledge and, and understanding. Somebody that thinks they're full of good works, thinks they're triumphing over their sin, getting better and better and better as they go, progressing constantly in holiness. That's somebody who's rich in spirit. They think themselves rich in spirit. Among a natural religious men and women, you won't find poverty of spirit that Christ is talking about here. A natural man does not see himself or know himself to be poor in spirit. He sees himself as rich in spirit. That's the worst place you can be, to see yourself rich in spirit. It's a terrible place to be. Christ declares the blessed are poor in spirit. Now what is that? What is it to truly know yourself to be poor in spirit? It's to see yourself and own yourself as nothing but a destitute, bankrupt sinner. That's what it is to be poor in spirit. It's somebody who knows they need God's mercy every day hour of every day. Not only in doctrine, but in spirit and in truth they know this. Not only in spirit and truth, but in act they know what sinners they are. Not only in act, but in their very heart they know how corrupt they are. If, if, if spiritually you have nothing, and you know that in you, you have nothing. You know you can do nothing. You're totally nothing, poor in spirit. You're flat broke spiritually. You're bankrupt spiritually. You're in debt spiritually. You have total inability spiritually. If you know this about yourself, Christ says, blessed are the beggars. That's what that word also means. Blessed are the poor in spirit. It could just as well be translated, blessed are the beggars. 
The poor in spirit believe on Christ. The Holy Spirit has come. He's given life. He's made you to know yourself so that you look out of yourself to Christ and there's your only confidence is in Him. The Holy Spirit has shown you the poverty you are in yourself. He's made you to know the poverty you are in yourself. And so as a beggar, you look only to Christ for righteousness and holiness and completeness and acceptance with God. That's somebody poor in spirit. Christ is their only righteousness. He's their only holiness. Apart from Christ giving us this understanding and giving us faith to believe on him, we know we're too poor to possess anything. They're constantly begging Christ for more faith. Do you constantly beg the Lord to increase your faith? You do. If you're poor in spirit, you do. You're constantly asking the Lord to save you from you. You know what it is to be assaulted by Satan constantly. You know what it is to be assaulted by your sin nature constantly. And so you're constantly asking the Lord to put a hedge about you and protect you from the devil. You're constantly asking the Lord to turn you from you, from turn you from, from being confident in you, to turn you from having any, any, putting any value on anything you do to save you from yourself. That's what it is to be poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are those that mourn. And they mourn because our love to Christ our love to Christ is so cold and so faint. And at the same time, we see Christ's love to us is hot and zealous. And that's just the opposite of us. You're not going to hear a believer going around singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Because we just don't have much love. We just don't have much love. When Christ sat at the table that night, he said, one of you will betray me tonight. Poverty of spirit was quick to ask, Lord, is it I? That wouldn't surprise me. If you're poor in spirit, you'd be the last to be surprised if you were the one that would betray Christ. Judas was the last one to ask it. And I think he just asked it because the others did. Because he didn't expect it. He was rich in spirit. Poverty of spirit says, if the Lord doesn't save me, then I won't be saved. If the Lord doesn't make me righteous, I have nothing to offer. I can't look to my works for holiness. When, when God says, be ye holy for I'm holy, that makes the man poor in spirit Flee to the Lord for holiness. The, the proud man, the rich in spirit, immediately thinks, well, I need to look to the law. I need to look to my works. I need to really check out what I'm doing. The poor in spirit says, Lord, how can I be holy unless you make me holy? We make a mistake looking for this grand feeling of assurance in our own hearts, in our own spirits. The Lord will make you know that underneath you are the everlasting arms. He'll make you know that. He's not going to leave you without some feeling of assurance. I wouldn't want a, uh, an experience of God's grace that was unfeeling. There, there's some feeling in knowing God. But we make a mistake looking to that feeling. Because just think about it. If you look to a feeling and you had this feeling that you're safe and secure and that you really know him and you've got this wisdom and these good works or whatever that gives you this feeling of assurance, aren't you really assured in that feeling rather than in Christ? You see, this thing doesn't make sense to a natural man. But when you are poor in spirit, that's what keeps you at Christ's feet. <laughs> With your assurance being in him rather than in yourself. 
I want it to be in Christ, don't you? All spiritual blessings are in Christ. I want my blessings to be in his hand, not mine. I'm thankful Christ is the author and finisher of faith. I'm so thankful God's not looking to the quantity or quality of this little mustard seed that I have called faith. I'm thankful Christ is the wisdom and power of God because I don't have any apart from him. I'm thankful that when my heart condemns me, God's greater than my heart. I'm thankful that the, that the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. There may come a day when I don't know me, much less know the Lord. But I'm thankful he knows them that are his. Now let's look here at the privilege. What's the privilege of these that are poor in spirit? Our Lord says they're blessed. The word means well off. It means happy. They're blessed. They're happy and they're rich. Our Lord is so different than us. Our Lord says come by without money, without price. Our Lord says those that are poor, they're rich and well off. <laughs> poor in spirit. Natural man, especially a naturally religious man, looks at these things and says, no, uh-uh. He says, this is the truth. It doesn't make sense to, to sinful flesh. He says, this is the truth. You, re you say, blessed are the poor in spirit? Natural man says, no, blessed are the rich in spirit. Confident, strong. A natural man says, blessed are they that mourn? That doesn't make sense. To be blessed is to rejoice. Be always happy. Well, God's people are happy, but we're mourning while we're happy. They say, they hear, blessed are the meek, and a natural man says, well, I'm meek, I'm humble, and he's proud of it. My will's my own. Don't you infringe on my rights. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. That natural man says, no, it's more blessed to be well fed and fat. You be able to point out your works and see what you've done for the Lord and so you can show people you and what you've done. Blessed are the merciful. Natural man says, just look how they treated me. You expect me to be merciful to them? I'm merciful most of the time. But now they, they don't deserve mercy. They deserve vengeance. That's what's in the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. A natural man will say, yeah, now that describes me. That describes me. I'm holier than thou. Come not near me, and if you do, I'll wage war on you. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Natural man says, no, blessed are those that are in ease in Zion. God says, cursed are those that are at ease in Zion. These things are backwards to a natural man. He doesn't understand these things. He, does, he doesn't see any reasonableness about these things. But believer, if you're suffering from poverty of spirit, if you're longing for a token of Christ's presence, Christ says you're blessed. Christ says you're well off. If you're mourning, weeping in your spirit, because you see yourself so poor in spirit, mourning over your sin, mourning over your unbelief, God says, you're well off. You're rich. You're rich. You'll be comforted. There's a great happiness to a believer who mourns his sin because Christ is his only comforter. 
I, this is better experienced than explained or declared because how can you explain to somebody how you could weep and mourn and be poor and be comforted <laughs> and be well off and rich and blessed and happy? You just got to you got to experience God's grace to understand it, don't you? Do you hunger and thirst for Christ, your only righteousness? Christ says you're blessed. He says you'll be filled. You'll be filled. Only those that are empty are filled by God. Only those that are mourning are made to laugh and be happy. Only those that are poor are made rich. You've heard me say before, the way up with God is down first. First down. And it don't ever turn around the other way. It's constantly in this life seeing ourselves and seeing what we are and going down, down, down and seeing him higher, higher, higher. John said he must increase, I must decrease. God feeds you with the gospel of his sovereign electing grace reminding you he chose you freely in him. That's what he fills us with when we're hunger and thirsting. Thankfully, he doesn't let us feed on this flesh. He doesn't let us feed on something in this life. He feeds you with the blessing of particular redemption that Christ come and he secured the redemption of all his people by his shed blood. Thankfully, when we mourn and we weep and we hunger and we thirst and, and are persecuted, the Holy Spirit of God never stops drawing you irresistibly to Christ's feet. That's what it is to be drawn irresistibly to Christ's feet, is to be made poor, bankrupt, hungry, thirsty, mourning. Those are the only ones you're going to find around Christ's feet. The true child of God sees himself poor. Sin's his only possession. He's empty of righteousness in himself. He's tossed and turned by Satan's assaults. But Christ says that very poverty is the result of God richly blessing you. If you're going to be richly blessed, the result's going to be poverty of spirit. A natural man doesn't even want that. That doesn't even sound appealing to a natural man. Nothing spiritual sounds appealing to a natural man. Nothing. God has to give you this hunger and this thirst. God has to make you want his blessing rather than the blessings of your flesh and of this world. Christ says to every child of God in poverty of spirit, blessed are the poor in spirit. How's that? Listen to this. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We're rich and we're blessed because our blessings are in Christ. All blessings are in Christ. In his heart rather than in my heart. In his hand rather than in my hand. In his works rather than in my works. All my blessings are his to give. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Riches. Poor? You're rich. In his grace. In Christ. And he's abounded toward us. Not just a little scant measure. He's abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. This world doesn't know the mystery of his will. He made it known to you according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. You think about our love. It waxes and wanes and it's just... It's so little to begin with, and then it's hot, cold. Love in God's heart's everlasting. It's without variableness, without a shadow of turning. The blessing of eternal life is safe in Christ, who is our life. What if you had to protect eternal life? What if it, God gave it to you and said, okay, you have eternal life now. Now get, get from here to the end of your life and, and keep possessing it. 
Aren't you glad he didn't do that? Christ is my life. I'm glad he's my life, and I'm not the one trying to hang on to eternal life. Eternal redemption. But if God said, you have redemption, but now if you mess up tomorrow, you're not going to have it anymore. I wouldn't make it till tomorrow. But it's eternal redemption because it's in Christ who's, who's eternal and whose blood is effectual. Do you know the sound of this trumpet? Do you rejoice in it? Do you hear this sound? Scripture said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Do you remember who Christ was anointed to preach to? He didn't say I was anointed to preach to the rich. He said I was anointed to preach to the poor. The poor. The poor in spirit will hear this sound and they'll rejoice in this message. Our blessing, our happiness, our riches is this. When I'm weak, then am I strong. For the power of Christ rests upon me. Aren't we? And we're, we're a, a, just a strange uh, being to ourselves, aren't we? When we're weak and we're really weak and we're mourning our weakness and all that, God says that's when you're really strong. When you see you have no strength but Christ, that's when you're really strong. And we have a tendency to, to not want to be in that state. We, want to, we don't want to be in that morning state. We don't want to be in that weak state. And that's, that's our sin nature because when we're stronger in ourselves, we're really weaker spiritually. We just don't get it. We just don't really get it. To be weak in spirit, to be cast down, to be totally looking out of yourself to Christ and him alone, that is strength because he's our strength. The happiness of the poor in spirits knowing this. Now listen, this is our happiness right here. I am nothing, but Christ is all. This world, just, don't say you're nothing. You need to be proud of yourself. You need to have some self-confidence. Believers have self-confidence. Way too much. <laughs> but to know in spiritual matters, I'm nothing. Christ is all. That's to be rich. And that's to be happy. It's to know when I'm vile, I'm corrupt, I'm totally depraved, but in the person of my great and glorious head, I'm without spot and without blemish or any such thing. I'm perfect. I'm accepted. I'm complete in him. That's happiness. That's blessing. That's, that's the riches he's talking about. You only can know this when you're poor in spirit. You can't know this unless you know yourself to be vile, corrupt, nothing but spots, nothing but, nothing but abomination to God in yourself. So that you see and know and trust that Christ is your only acceptance with God. And in him you're perfect. In him you're complete. That's riches. What is this happiness? What, what are these riches if we have all our poverty in ourselves? And behold, all our riches in Christ. What, what is it? What is our portion? What does he say we have? Here it is. Here's our possession. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now get what the Lord's saying here. And don't miss this. Listen very carefully and think on this and get this. Get this. Christ says... You know, somebody else can say, I don't have any assurance. I don't have any subjective assurance. I don't feel assured in my heart. I just, I feel so poor and weak and nothing. And I just, and at the same time, this person is saying, Christ, if Christ doesn't save me, I won't be saved. 
Christ is all. I must be saved by Christ and Him alone. But I don't feel anything in me that gives me any confidence in me. Listen to what Christ is saying to us right here. True spiritual poverty rather than disqualify us for what is to come is instead the earnest and the foretaste of the enjoyment of enduring eternal riches. Do you get that? I don't feel anything of myself but poverty. I don't see anything but sin and wounds and bruises and putrefying sores from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. That's all I am is nothing. Christ says, if Christ is your all, if he's your only confidence, if he's the only one that, that, that you trust to save you, rather than your feelings, rather than your confidence in, in your profession, him alone, Christ says, that doesn't disqualify you. That makes you rich in all the blessings of God. We need to get that. We need to understand that. This thing of the full assurance of faith and the full assurance of understanding and the full assurance of hope, it's about having all my assurance in Christ, not in my heart. Christ says this to you that are poor in spirit. All things are yours. And you're Christ. And Christ is is God's. That's what our Lord means when he says, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You possess all things. If, you, if Christ is your all, then you possess all. It's a good thing to be poor in spirit. A good thing. Let's stand together. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for teaching us this when you walked this earth. Thank you for reminding us in your word and bringing us a message to, to remember not to be looking within at ourselves and looking for some riches in us to assure us, make us look out of us to Christ only. Lord, will you bless this word? Lord, make us to see our poverty of spirit. Make us to see the riches we have in Christ, how unsearchable, how just how full we possess everything in him. Lord, we pray you truly meet with us this hour. As we take a break here and we come back, don't let us forget this. Help us to talk about it to one another. Help us to come in and sit down and prepare ourselves to hear your word again. Lord, take the world out of our hearts for just a little while. Let us truly meditate on the things of God. We ask you this, and, and, and keep us thinking on it. Lord, forgive us for our rambling and our thoughts being here and there and everywhere. Lord, focus us on Christ. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.